Time now for our weekly roundtable where we take a look at the week's big events. Joining me now are Democratic strategist Kathy Allen, Republican strategist Chris Vance, and Seattle Times editorial columnist Joni Balter. And Chris, thank you very much because I know you just came running in from out of the rain to make it here. We really appreciate you being Off here. Off a very crowded I-5. Uh, okay, let's talk about these races. Let's talk about the King County executive race. A uh, recent poll by King 5 shows it's pretty close. Susan Hutchison out in front, 47%. Dow Constantine at 44%. Undecided, 9%. Uh, what stands out for you in this race? What's going to make a difference for them to try to get a lead? Well, I think what's going on in this race is it's this battle between do you want, do you want the, the experienced hand or do you want something fresh and new? And people are really, I think that's why it's so close. People can't really decide. I mean, they know that floods are coming, flu is coming. That sort of leans toward Dow Constantine because at least he knows the county government. But then there's this whole thing about how the county's falling apart. You want something new, let's start over, let's try it different. Is there a, ma a change message going on here? Oh, absolutely. There's a, a huge change message. People are mad at county government. People are ready for a change. Uh, this has been very surprising to me, though, that uh, Dow Constantine has not been very aggressive, in my opinion, since the primary. Um, and neither side is spending any money yet. Let's see where we are in a couple of weeks when the money starts flowing in this race and a message starts getting out there on the airwaves. Yes, and actually we don't have to wait for a couple of weeks. It's actually October 13th is when the deadline for filing everyone's intent to spend what? Will Frank Stanton actually put in another half a million dollars to help Susan? Mm -hmm. Will Labor put in a half a million dollars to help Dow? I think that right now we don't know that. It is a dead heat, and frankly, there's not a lot of energy focused on either one over the other. It's just the friends of Dow versus the friends of Susan that hold the cards, in my opinion. Well, so what needs to happen, I guess, to separate them? Anything in particular? Money kind of helps. Yeah, money. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> Kathy, and Kathy's exactly right, and this is unfortunate. You haven't but, said that before. You know, I, I say really, it all the time. I can't believe it. <laughs> the, in, in, in politics now in Washington State, because of our ca campaign contribution limits, third-party expenditures, independent expenditures, are what carry the day. Not what you raise on your own, unfortunately. Which side is going to put in a bunch of money to and try and define this race? So a PAX. Are but, we looking but, at that? But beyond the money, you guys, it really does matter who runs the county. It's mm -hmm. a big job. Of course. We're, sort, we're sort of acting like, well, you know, either one would be just fine. I mean, it does matter. This is a big job, and this is a county that's changing. It's changing what it does for people. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be. Or what it doesn't or do. Or that's for a better way to say it. it it's changing. It's not going to be in the animals. So this is what's right. going to get out of parks. That experience thing, because let's face it, Susan Hutchinson has no experience in government whatsoever, which some may view as a real positive. Dow Constantine has been there, and she's used that to slam him a lot. So is is that? going to be an issue at all here well, that people are going to things at play. You have last year, Obama did such a good job of change. That would be the message that we're still living with that. You would think it's the economy, stupid. No, more than anything else, still and yet out there, most people are thinking change or no change. Used to be the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. This is the year that defies that message because right, right now well, people if, are saying if I right. or not go to they the do mayor's it. race though there is an overdose of change there because uh -huh. <laughs> what you have is you have two candidates and the reason you have so many undecideds in that race is you have two candidates people just don't know and okay. even after you spend the time you're still kind of wondering. You, you bring up the mayor's race let's uh, king poll this week uh, showed it basically in a dead heat and not too much different than really what's going on in the county exec race except the big thing there at 38 percent for both candidates 24 percent undecided um you know, the thing that i'm hearing and i've moderated debates with both sets the king county executive and the the mayor's race but in the mayor's race everybody says i don't know these guys mm -hmm. i can't That's i right. i have no feeling whatsoever and they're not even sure whether they're the right guys right I, and and sure. same story there enrique it's where's the money going to be how much seattle's too big you know to ring every doorbell that sort of thing it's it's about who can put more rating points on television and in that one what i'm hearing is malahan's side is going to have all the money and that might give him a big advantage right now where most people are who have spent real time like jody like spent have, time yes. this, this this week with the both of them you know malahan is getting points for having the depth of field of friends he's got more friends that will put more money into saying they trust him on the other side, when McGinn gets up to speak, he's very credible. He actually comes off more honest, the guy you'd rather sit down and have dinner with. But what most people think, neither one unto itself is really riveting me to make a choice quite yet. So this will be a late decider in most mm -hmm. people's heads. The 
Alaskan Way viaduct, the deep bore tunnel, that whole issue, is it still at play in all of this? Because uh, it's still something that Michael McGinn says he's against that deep bore tunnel, and some say he's a kind of a one-note guy. It's, it's absolutely in play, because in some cases, it's the only thing some voters know about these candidates. Mm -hmm. So they know Mike McGinn wants to uh, reopen the whole thing and go back on that uh, but he whole can't. decision. But he well, can't. it's becoming harder because he's it's got a, a governor state highway, against him, right. and he's going to have a city council memorandum of understanding. So for him to do anything, he's going to have to go get sit five votes, and it'd be better if and he it's, had six. It's yep. a state highway. Mm -hmm. It's a state highway. It's not a Seattle city road. Olympia is sick of this issue. I really, really doubt that a new mayor of Seattle is going to go get the governor and the legislature to revisit this issue, and no actually, matter what they say. 61% of the folks in the poll I recently saw are done with the viaduct. It's not that they love the Bohr Tunnel more than they love viaduct replacement. <laughs> it's that, you know what, the last eight years was defined by that darn viaduct. We're not going to define the next eight years. It's over. They, Get over it. And I think on. that that could be the fatal flaw of anyone who stands behind uh, any change in that viaduct is I think they go down. That's the one thing I think the voters are going to be clear about. You mentioned the state, uh, Chris Vance. Let's talk about Senate Majority Leader Lisa Brown, Democrat, who says that taxes are back on the table. The governor has said, uh, well, Lisa hinted that, that she's opening the door for uh, some type of tax package to deal with this uh, budget crisis that everybody's facing, but mm -hmm. you know our state will face as well. Uh, what do you make of this? I make of this that we're being pushed up against a very hard place and so people are putting everything on the table. You can get to the point where you cut so much that people actually decide, okay, okay, if it's going to be social services, put it on the table, let me vote on it. I think I'd say, uh, ooh, ouch, bad timing Yes. Right. In, in relationship A to the recession and B in relationship to um, Initiative 1033, the latest Tim Iman initiative. It just fuels him. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and 1033 is actually this huge issue that not that many people are talking about out there that will cap revenue basically at a point, at the lowest point during this recession. And when the Democrats start talking about raising taxes, it just gives Tim all sorts of fuel. They need to keep their mouths shut at least till after the November election. But let's election. also make sure what we what she's talking about here, and that she's talking about at least the the tax package in the last session that she was promoting, uh, promoting right. was a income tax, and it was for people again over two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's not aimed really at middle class folks. But, but Lisa all, Brown all, went away in a hurry. That was like a two day event or something yeah. like yeah. that. She didn't. She didn't. You know, I think it's last. coming. Back. It, it will always be back on the table. The, frankly, there is not a majority opinion in the Democratic majority for a tax increase at this time. However, the fact that you put it on the table, it's that you put that on the table as a as the antithesis to all of the other programs you're going to have to cut, including things like jails and public safety. When you start cutting that kind of stuff, that is when people rise up and say, I will not let us slip below a certain amount of coverage. And, and the Democrats would have raised taxes last year had it not been for the initiative that said you need a two-thirds vote. Well, you can't amend or suspend that within two years the two years is up. All right, let's mention here that uh, we have debates coming up here on KCTS 9, October 15, the King County Executive Candidates, and October 22nd, the Mayoral Candidates. Should give people some real insight into who these guys are all about, and thank you all for your opinions. We'll see you again uh, really soon. Thank you. All right.